everybody. Welcome to yet another Heart of CX podcast. I'm Max Ball, and joined today, as always, with Joanna Palmer. And Joanna, there are two things going on this week. One is we're starting to think and talk a little about verticals. And the yeah. other is you've brought another guest. So maybe you can tell us about going vertical and talk about our guest. Yes, definitely. Thanks, Max. And so we want to talk about various different customer experiences and customer journeys in those major vertical uh, markets. And so the first one we're going to focus on is financial services. And I'm really excited to introduce our guest today. Melissa Rother is the financial services vertical principal at Ring Central. Thanks, Melissa, for joining us today. Do you want to talk a little bit about yourself and your role? Yeah, sure. Again, Max and Joanna, I really appreciate you um, inviting me today and allowing me to join your podcast. So excited to talk about financial services. But again, um, Joanna, as you said, I'm the financial services industry principal for Ring Central. Um, so it's kind of my primary role and responsibility at uh, Ring Central is just to ensure that our product's the best fit for the industry, right? That comes along with product enhancements, security certifications that we need to have, solution partners that we need to join forces with. Um, so really it's just ensuring that what we're offering to our financial services customers is what they're looking for. Excellent, excellent. Well, let's start with talking about the trends that we're seeing within financial services today. And first, since it's top of mind for everybody and it seems like we all have been talking about it for the last 18 months. Let's talk about what you're seeing in terms of long-term impacts and customer experience and financial services as a result of COVID. Yeah, you know, <laughs> uh, COVID definitely had a large impact on the financial services industry. Um, some could say that uh, an industry that normally was in the office at the branch working had to go remote. Um, and still be able to service their clients and build relationships. And so there has been a great impact that it's had from a technology standpoint. And I think a great thing or a great result of COVID, which I don't think there's too many, but a, a good impact from COVID was the speed at which the digital transformation took place within financial services. You know, I've been in the industry for a long time, been with UC for a long time, and I don't think anyone could ever predicted the speed at which these organizations and institutions have been adopting technology would have ever gone this fast. I think, you know, something that we saw, oh, you know, over maybe the next five to 10 years, we'll start, you know, implementing these solutions happened months, you know, I, I, again, 18 months, here we are, but, you know, just at a record pace. And I think also it's great because I think it has opened up a lot of channels uh, for, folks to in, engage with their institutions on that they normally wouldn't have available to them. I also think it's brought in a level of comfort on the institution side with, hey, this does work. Our customers are engaging with us. They do like being serviced from this channel. So I think it's really, you know, a nice change within this industry to see the rate of the adoption for this technology and the customers responding really well to it. I, I, I like what we're seeing. It's exciting times, I think, within financial services and especially, you know, cloud uh, contact centers. Yeah, yeah definitely. I, I completely agree. I, I wouldn't want to be in any other industry in terms of contact center is definitely the place to be, I feel like, at this point and just the the amount of innovation and, and change at this point. So as we think about moving forward with, with uh, customer experience and financial services, one of the things that's top of mind is really that physical interaction that was so prominent prior to COVID. And then COVID really embraced the, the digital interactions. And we have this conversation quite a bit in terms of what does it look like after COVID from a, from a working perspective in terms of at home, in the office, a combination of both. What does it look like from a financial services perspective and a customer experience perspective? Do you think we're going to swing back all the way to physical in person? Or do you think that there's going to be a... No, I think we'll definitely see a, a hybrid um, within financial services. Again, I think, you know, 
the customers have gotten used to being able to interact on video or be able to interact off of a website chat or through social media. So I think that aspect will stay and continue to grow, um, as well as because they're servicing younger generations, their appetite for the speed of convenience has increased. Um, but I think there are certain engagements where you're going to want that personal touch, right? There's some type of sensitive nature in financial services with the, the topic at hand or just the product you're offering where you're going to want to have that type of interaction with your advisor or with your agent. Um, so I think it's definitely going to still be a split. I don't think we're going to go full throttle back um, to all in person, but I do think that that will start to pick up again. Um, you know, especially within the wealth management space, I think there's mm -hmm. been a huge shift in the way that advisors have seen how much more productive they can be within a day <laughs> without having to travel around from meeting to meeting, be in the car. Oh, I've got to be here. I got to do this. And at a late dinner meeting and being able to be centered and focused, um, I think they'll kind of come to realize that they're booking more business. They can be more productive. Their clients are still engaged and happy. So I, I think we'll see a nice balance going forward. So in banking, uh, you, you have the branches, and that's such a physical investment in face-to-face -face communication. You know, contact center is, but it's one large room where everybody's kind of gathered together. Here, you've got all these disparate things. Is What's going to happen to the branches? Do you think we're going to start losing a lot of them, or do you think they're going to keep them? What, what's so, your you know, there have been discussions around reduced ROE or real estate own. I think that's that's going to be... I, I think that's going to be a consideration. I, I don't think we'll see just mass bank branches shutting down. I, I think there's always a level of security when you drive down your local neighborhood main street that you see your bank's logo on a building, right? That kind of gives you like, oh, you know, my money's, my money's there. It's safe. I can see it. Um, what we do see, though, from kind of a branch standpoint is when they used to just have a relationship manager or an advisor sit at that desk Monday through Friday from eight to five. I think what we see is a lot of rotation and of staffing and also having a video monitor saying, okay, well, let me connect you with one of our advisors. I can set up a video meeting with you right here, right now. And then if you'd like to schedule a time to meet in person later, we can do that. So I think that physical branches, I don't think those are going anywhere, but what I do think is the staff that's inside them will see more of a, a reduced footprint of that staff and the ability to service multiple locations um, at one time. That makes sense. That makes sense. So I'm gonna pivot a little bit, move from banking and, and those branches over to loan servicing, another component to financial services, and what sort of trends are you seeing there within loan services? You know, a great thing in loan servicing is we like what we're doing, we just want to do more of it faster, right? <laughs> Especially with COVID. We, we need to do this, we just need to do more of it. Um, there was definitely a, a large increase when COVID hit of, you know, people moving, people wanting to refinance, people wanting new loans. So there was a huge increase. Um, so how can we use our contact center to turn those leads out faster? Um, so I think, uh, you know, a lot of our customers have come to us saying, we like what we're doing, but can you just make it more efficient for us? And so by us being able to route that lead to the agent right away, route that lead not only to an agent right away, but qualify it and ensure that we're routing it to the agent as appropriate, whether it be an FHA loan, whether it be a VA loan, maybe it's a Spanish speaking customer. I wanna make sure that I'm collect, connecting that lead with an agent as fast as I can and getting on it. Um, I think it's, again, you know, in the lending business, they are busy. <laughs> So they just want to be able to do it more efficiently and keep doing it. That's what I think we're seeing from a lot of our customers there. Definitely, definitely. And I, I think the other piece of this, and you, and you touched on it, on it, is getting it to the right agent. And, and so skills-based routing is what we saw for quite a while in terms of ensuring that we had that granular level of FHA loan versus um, conventional loan. And then what we're seeing now with AI is a whole nother level of routing, being able to really match 
the customer's um, emotion and personality to that of, of an agent that, that is best suited for, for that personality. And so as we think about that next round of contact center maturity, it takes it that much further um, from the matching of agents. The other piece of this in terms of matching of agents, we also talk about matching of channels and ensuring that customers have are able to interact in the channel of their choice. And so with that, with COVID, you mentioned, you know, that, that there was definitely this embrace of, of digital channels. What are you seeing in terms of trends with, with uh, right channeling and, and uh, offering various different channels to, to customers? Yeah, I definitely think that right channeling is, is a big piece of how to handle that college volume, how to handle that inquiry, right? Can you use uh, an AI-assisted chatbot to support a lot of these inquiries? Can we, you know, maybe have them use just a chat instead of actually doing a voice call? Or how can we maybe have them call us back or we can kind of route a different way? I think right channeling is important because especially within the lending, they were just so overwhelmed with what they had coming in that they needed to, to get to those inquiries as fast as possible and ensure that it was the inquiries that actually needed that high touch point that were being handled by a live person right away and kind of right channeling some of those other less pertinent, immediate need answers to a, a different channel. That makes sense. And so with that, with that routing engine and ensuring that you've got the right match there. Integrations definitely come top of mind in terms of ensuring that you are integrated with the CRM, that you are able to personalize that service for the customer that's calling in and, and offering and anticipating their needs there. Um, in, in terms of self-service versus um, agent assisted contacts. Are you seeing any trends there associated with uh, providing more self service or less self service depending on the customer? Yeah, and you know, I think the great thing with the solution is that you can tell what customer, what channel that customer prefers, right? Mm -hmm. So it's giving them a holistic view with that integration touch point, like, oh, you know. Joanna actually really likes being able to just chat with us. She doesn't usually pick up our calls. Every time she comes in, she's chatting with us. Or, you know, Max, he's a heavy Twitter user. We see him on there all the time. <laughs> and so we want to make sure that whatever he's putting down, we're picking up and going ahead and responding appropriately to that. So I think it's, it's a big part of, you know, one of the reasons customers stay with their financial institution is that one, they're offering the digital channel that they want to engage with. And two, they're reaching back out to them on that channel, right? I could say I prefer SMS all day long, but if my agent hasn't picked up on that yet and he's calling me constantly, then that's not really a service, right? SMS then wouldn't be considered a channel that I can engage with my agent on because they're not using it. It's a one-way communication. So I think a big reason that customers choose uh, an institution is that they're being serviced on that channel of their choice. So I think that's, you know, definitely prevalent and important for them to pick up on and ensure that they're using from, you know, company-wide that channel that that customer prefers. What about really high value customers? And do you see banks handling that level of communication where you really want to build more of a relationship? What are they, is it kind of the same or there's some different things they do there? I mean, that comes back into the, the routing, right? Recognizing that, oh, hey, that's a high net worth client that's calling in. You know, Joanna's their personal banker. Don't even put them in this queue. Let's route them right away to right. Joanna. So Joanna can be the first one to answer. Joanna knows exactly, you know, who their kids' names are, what's going on in their life, what's happening, and they can have that that conversation. So we see that as a very common request within financial services is making sure that those high net worth clients have that ability to connect right away with the right person. They don't want to repeat it. They don't want to tell them who they, who they are. They just right. want you to know who they are. And I think that's important. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I, I had an experience. I'm, I'm not a high wealth client, but I had an experience. <laughs> Me neither. Um, <laughs> I, we've been in this house a long time and I re refinanced it multiple times. And 
I, I there was I called this company, you know, I don't even remember how I made the initial connection, but Adam was my guy. He did really good. And, you know, interest rates kept going down. And on my fourth refi, um, you know, I called him, went through the whole thing. And it wasn't until I got the paperwork back that I realized he worked for a different mortgage broker. But I had always been calling him on his personal cell phone. So, you know, it's important to have the routing because the bank needs to have the or the the loan giver needs to have the control. Otherwise, you know, somebody leaves, they're going to take all their clients with them. And that's what happened in this case with me. Yeah, we see that a lot within financial services, especially with the wealth advisors, right? Um, they could go from right. one tier one to the second. They're going to take it's literally right across the street, but they're going to take their books of business. But how do you keep the customer recognizes the logo, not the, you know, obviously right. receiving that right. personal touch from the banker, but also recognizing the logo and the company um, is, is important. Yeah. And, and with that, you know, thinking about just we do business based on relationships and people and not necessarily logos. And so I, I, I do think that that is tricky building that depth within and loyalty to the logo and not the person. Um, so thinking about that and creating that depth and that loyalty, you know, I think about organizations as a whole and contact center transformation as a whole and, and moving contact centers from these very cost conscious contact centers that were all about driving down costs to customer engagement centers, which were, was all about providing channels of choice. And now we're seeing this swing to customer experience centers and ensuring that we provide that customer centric level of service where the customer is in the middle of whatever we do. And you think about that and you think about overall financial services is all about driving revenue. And so how do you balance customer centricity versus revenue generation? And where is that right balance? I think that's a that's a tricky balance for everyone to to find. Um, again, you know, we talk about how financial services is definitely relationship based. It's definitely referral based as well. So even if someone might not be coming in with a, a revenue generating inquiry, you still want to ensure that you provide that high level of customer service because the next time they call in, it might be a revenue generating inquiry that you want to jump right on or Maybe I'm calling in and I don't have a lot to offer right now. I'm just inquiring some simple questions, but maybe my parents do. Maybe my sister does. And if I don't receive that high level of customer service, I'm not going to tell my sister to, hey, you know what? No, their service is awful. You know, they pushed me to a uh, uh, hold line that I sat on for 20 minutes and then received a call from someone that wasn't able to answer my question and got transferred again. So you just want to make sure that you're finding that appropriate balance. And I think we see that a lot, you know, pushing to a chat bot sometimes isn't always a bad thing. Sometimes that's all they need. And they really do feel like they got their question answered. They, it was convenient for them. They didn't have to sit on hold. And that's what worked for them. So I don't think that the perceived notion of being pushed to a, a digital channel is necessarily a bad thing, as long as that digital channel is appropriately set up to handle those types of inquiries. Um, so I think that balance of revenue generating activity, customer experience, client engagement is a tricky one to find. Um, but I, I, I think, you know, speed and convenience are key these days, right? Speed and convenience is everyone's got a million things going on. So if you can assist those customers quickly, I think that's what's going to resonate with them. Yeah, and, and that's a great point. That is an excellent point, I think, to end this on is it is all about ease. It's all about speed. It's all about convenience and taking that friction out of the overall interaction with the, with the company is going to really ensure that they increase loyalty and keep those customers happy. So on that note, Melissa, I want to thank you so much for uh, joining us today. Max, any last thoughts from you? I just, it's fascinating how companies solve customer problems and they're always customer problems and the 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 issues of how do you take the care, how do you move from a cost center to a whatever center, 
are all the same, but all the different ways they play out and all the different drivers that you have across the verticals. I think, Joanna, I think this is going to be a lot of fun. And I think, Melissa, you were the perfect person to start us off. And I think FinServe was a great way to start thinking about this this way. Yes, absolutely. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you, guys. I really enjoyed the conversation. Thanks a lot. All right. Take care.